Welcome back. I'm Hal Sparks filling in for Joan, and we've got other callers on the line. Who do we have, Lady B? Who's up next? Uh, we have Roosevelt. Excellent. Welcome, Roosevelt. Hal, thank you for taking my call. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I wanted to add on to what you said, and then I wanted to add on to what you and Steve said earlier sure. as far as the future mm-hmm. elections. Mm-hmm. When it comes down to the virus, let's not forget that he had a an interview with Bob Woodward yes. for his book, and, and he said, because he's such a stupid idiot that he can't keep a secret, so he told uh, Bob, Bob, this is a contagious, this is very dangerous. Remember when he said that on, on the tapes, on the Bob Woodward tapes? Oh, yeah, and he, and he specifically said he downplayed the threat, and he downplays it any yeah. he can. Like, that is even bigger than his... His knowledge of it is that, you know, what, no matter what I'm being told, I, I act like it's nothing, which is precisely why it spread the way it did. Right. Go ahead. And not, on, and not only that, Hal, that's what caused him the election, because if we would have done what exactly totally. President Biden did, which is the mask, that's, that's why Biden is having such a hard time with the mask and the vaccine, because of his early actions or not, or, or not taking action, to be, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest with you. So, so he caused his own election. He caused the election of the two senators that he supported in Georgia. Remember, he backed mm-hmm. them up and he said, oh, oh we're yeah. going to win in Georgia. We're gonna, and I'm going to win re-election and all this and that. And for future elections, to add to what you guys said between you and Steve, how are they going to attract any new voters when their, their demographic, uh, uh, Trump's demographic, demographic is set over 70 years old or QAnon uh-huh. idiots? Uh, so how are you going to have a future in the party? That's what puzzles me, uh, Hal, as yeah. far as um, all, these, all these other leaders. Where do they think that the, 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 the Republican Party is going in the future? Just just uh, throw uh, minorities out, like what they're doing in Georgia and, yeah, and all if these you, other, if you're just uh, if you're just counting on your base, you stiff arm everybody else. It is more like yeah. more akin to a ratings approach than it is to an election approach. Because if you just you know make sure you're the only cable news show in town, you make sure that the other ones get kicked off. Because like Fox is doing that with Newsmax and a bunch of other places. They're while they're bitching about you know antitrust stuff everywhere, they're also trying to get you know these other networks from not being added to cable systems all across the country, so that they're in direct competition. You know, and, you know, MSNBC, you could argue that like Democracy Now! and some other sources being available, even YouTube itself being available on cable uh, systems might eat into their uh, bottom line a little bit as far as viewership, but they're just acting like that doesn't concern them. They just get on with it, right? Fox, on the other hand, is very aware that Newsmax, OAN, RSBN, and all these other sites are eating into their bottom line. So they're trying to stop them from doing it, which is classic antitrust. You know, all the stuff that Trump yeah. is saying about big tech, they're doing this. They're trying to do this to Newsmax and others. Um, and uh, th- you watch for that to continue, too. Sorry, I want to I want to make sure you have. Co- yeah, finish. And in Norman Goldman's, Goldman's words, the, 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 the elections are in the margins. OK, so how how do they get independence, which independents voted overwhelmingly for they're not going to. for Biden? And they're not going to. And what about the young people? Remember the young people? And remember, our forces, they went Democratic for the first time in a long time, Hal. That's right. So all these, uh, all these things uh, is what I wanted to add to, to the conversation of you and Steve. And to close it out, when it comes down to the virus, remember Deborah Burks had an interview. I believe it was in March of this year. And she said that 400,000 people died unnecessary because of Trump's actions after she sat there. And, and, and to be honest with you, Trump treats his own followers like lab rats, lab rats, because mm-hmm. he tells us to take chloroquine, bleach, uh, uh, fluorescent lights up the keister, you know, you name it. So he yeah. treats them like lab rats. And, 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 Another thing, too, and on the same subject, remember he was making fun of Biden, how big of a mask he was wearing, and he looked ridiculous. Right. But who got COVID? He right. did. Who yeah. got COVID? A lot of the people that were under him in the White House and in the cabinets. And remember another guy that we never seen for about three weeks? 
Bill Barr, we didn't know what his whereabouts were. Right. Remember that? About three weeks went by, no Bill Barr at all. Mm-hmm. But they they had that gathering of that judge that he uh, he put in the Supreme Court, that female judge. Uh, yeah. Remember they were having yeah. a big party Andy out Cohen had Barrett, right? White House law. Yes. Yeah. So so he was the cause of his own election uh, of not winning his his own reelection. And, and and to be honest with you, anything this guy touches, Hal, turns yes. into you know what. I've said yes. that plenty of times. Sure. So thank you for letting me. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, no, I appreciate time. it. I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, the, you, you, we're going to see this as it continues to grow, too. This is an issue that, uh, you know, the Republicans are going to have to deal with on top of all the other things they're dealing with is the fact that Trump is, for all practical purposes, falling apart. Um, he, he, he was a mess at his, you know, his lawsuit launch that he did. He could barely get through a, a sentence without screwing up a very normal word or phrase. It was fascinating to watch this happen. And, and they, I can't, it, they're always talking about how we must know that Biden's slipping uh, and he's got cognitive decline. This is the storyline that they tell all the time. Oh, it must be. He can't possibly, you got to know. And, and all of us know he has a stutter. He deals with a stutter. And there are multiple ways that uh, a person with a stutter expresses that stutter one way is in the stuttering the other is in an awareness of the words that trigger their stutter and therefore having to pause for a moment rephrase what they're going to say so as not to trigger their stutter anybody who has any questions about this can talk to stuttering john um he can give you a whole breakdown of what it's like going on inside your head when you're especially when you're trying to craft an argument now add on top of that politics where you're aware of how you speak of something will affect not only the people that you're uh, speaking against in terms of policy, but the people that you're actually speaking for. Because in, in our modern day and age of jargon outweighing human worth in some cases, and this is a running, you know, if you don't, if you don't salute the flag or, or if you kneel for it and all this kind of, this symbology, you know, freaks out the right. There's only one way to show patriotism uh, is term in terms of the Dan Bonginos of the world and the like. Um, meanwhile, on the on the left, if you don't use the proper terminology for someone, it shows that you have a phobia or a hateful nature towards someone instead of just not being up on the latest trend of things. And you may be in the process of trying to help that person, speak on their behalf, offer a policy solution that may benefit them, but you can get attacked for that. So add that whole mess of the linguistics around politics on top of a lifelong stutter and the two methodologies I said where you're dealing with, and they're a myriad, but these are the two primary that, uh, that I think Biden seems to deal with the most, which is actually stuttering and finding a way to phrase what he's saying in a way that won't trigger his stutter. That also meets the other criteria of not distancing the very people he's speaking on behalf of and not overtly demonizing and distancing himself from the people he's speaking to that might not be on board. Because again, if in your activism, all you ever do is get a, a, a circle group of yup yups agreeing with you and you never convert anyone to your way of thinking, I can't state this uh, strongly enough. You are not an activist. If you are not changing minds and ultimately changing policy, not through legislation or uh, specifically through legal action, making it a forced top-down approach to this. If you can't change policy by convincing people and making them aware of something through your language and how you talk, you're not an activist. You're, I mean, arguably, I mean, on the activist level, you'd be the activist equivalent of an ambulance chaser in that regard. So you have to be aware of who you're speaking to. If you're doing nothing but preaching to the choir, or in some ca- people's cases, yelling at the choir, you are not an activist. I mean, there's no revolutions that happen that way. There's no lasting change that occurs that way. You gotta be on board with it. So you add that aspect of politics, where somebody who gets elected also, whether they like it or not, represents, legally represents, everyone in their district whether that person voted for them or not, welcome to democracy, that's hard enough. That's a very difficult row to hoe. That's a a tiny needle to thread. Add that on top of a a stutter, you recognize that, uh, you know, Biden has more 
a, a, a higher level of difficulty than other people. He is running the race, dragging cinder blocks um, and, and a communication nature. Meanwhile, the Republicans have to be aware. They have to be aware that the man that they're looking at when they're like, that they put on his head on Rambo's body, that they dress as Moses in paintings and have soldiers kneeling around him. They have to know. They, you know, they, they have to know um, that he's a mess when they watch his speeches. And he doesn't have the other issues. He doesn't have a lifelong stutter that he's had to deal with that is part of his issues in communication. And he certainly doesn't give a crap about drafting his message for the widest audience. So he has no excuse for screwing up. He just does. We got to take a break. We'll be back right after this.